yesterday, yesterday was, was pretty amazing. Um, it came together better, I think, than any of us planned. I'm going to talk more about it later, but I, yesterday I thought, wow, are we alive? And then I woke up this morning and thought, wow, are we alive? <laughs> and I've, I've had conversations with a lot of people today who've had the same kind of feeling that, boy, yesterday was great, but I am exhausted today. <laughs> so that, that tune popped into my head. I thought, let's, let's sing verse one of that. So let's open in a word of prayer. Almighty God, we ask, and are we yet alive? And I think the answer is yes. There is life in this church and in this congregation, and that life is present through your Holy Spirit. We ask that your Spirit would join us this morning, that your Spirit would fill us, and your Spirit would give us the energy and perseverance to carry on with your work. We ask that our worship this morning would be pleasing to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, I invite you to Stand, if you are able, and join in our call to worship, which will be from Psalm 80 this morning. Our call to worship is actually Psalm 80, verses 1 and 2, and 8 through 19. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth in the presence of Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, Stir up your might and come to save us. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It took deep root and filled the land. The mountains were covered when it sh with its shade, the, the mighty cedars with its branches. It sent out its branches to the sea and its shoots to the river. Why then have you broken down its walls? so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruit? The boar from the forest ravage it, and all that move in the field feed on it. Turn again, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine, the stock which your right hand planted. They have burned it with fire, they have cut it down. May they perish at the rebuke of your countenance. But let your hand be upon those of your right hand, the ones whom you have made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Amen. And our hymn, Forward Through the Ages, 555, we are.
Please be seated. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Trusting in God's hope for us, let us come before God with a contrite heart, asking for reconciliation and seeking peace. God of hope, we confess our disregard of your care, our doubt of your providence, our blindness to see signs of your love. We are afraid to risk our comforts to find new life. We separate ourselves from you and from others and foster divisions between those you love. Help us to amend our lives and make us your faithful people who bear the good fruit of your word in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God hears our confession, rejoicing as we desire amendment of life. God lifts us from our despondency to rejoice in the company of the saints. God acknowledges the forces that separate us and brings us to peace. Rejoice in the knowledge of reconciliation and a life lived in the presence of God. Let's pray. God of peace, you call at times, and your call at times appears to divide us from one another. Help us to overcome our fears and respond in courage. Give us faith to trust the unity that is beyond our sight. And give us your eyes to recognize the signs before us. We ask this in the confidence of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our next hymn is 511, Am I a Soldier of the Cross? be seated. Let's bow our head for the prayer of illumination. God of wisdom, we eagerly seek your presence in our lives and in the world. By your spirit, speak your word to us and give us your grace to recognize the abundant signs of your care for us so that we might be freed to act in the world with courage and abandon. Amen. Our first reading, the epistle, comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 29 through 12, through 12, verse 2. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians tempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, and David and Samuel and the prophets, 
who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mockingly and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were, they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, without us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our gospel comes from the book of Luke, chapter 12, 49 through 56. I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a, bapti a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided. Three against two and two against three, they will be divided. Father against son and son against father. Mother against daughter and daughter against mother. Mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it is going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be a scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The holy words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Are we yet alive? I don't know about you, but I'm whooped. <laughs> but wasn't it fun yesterday? Let me start by, by giving a big thank you to everyone who participated in some way. Um, there were so many hands involved in this, we can't possibly thank everyone individually because there were just too many people involved. So many times in a, a church project, you have one or two people who really take everything on and then it kind of drifts out from there. But this was a, a true church-wide event where everybody stepped in and took a part gave in some way and participated and it was it was incredible so thank you many of you were here um, we were joined by quite a few people from our past past pastors past members but i tell you one of the coolest things for me was seeing the community involvement i don't know how many saw or not but there were quite a few kids over in the 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 area, and I, I kind of, at the beginning, I thought that, oh, that's somebody's grandkids or somebody's, you know, family that, that came along to join, which was great. And then as it started going, I realized, no, these are kids from the community. Um, I found out later that, you know, two girls on a bike were riding by and, and asked, you know, what was going on, and, and someone told them, oh, we're just having a celebration. Go, go have fun on the bounce house. They got on their phone and told their kids, their, their friends said, hey, they're having this thing. It's free. Come on down. Try it. And they were all over the place to the point that everybody left everything was all cleaned up we were getting ready to shut down and Emily was doing kind of one last thing on the bounce house and here all the kids came on their bikes again and they were back in the bounce houses they were back in the in the the punching bag and Rochelle and I are going how long until we unplug this because we're tired <laughs> 
But it, it was so cool to see, we figured probably about 10 kids from the community um, who, who joined in to this celebration. Um, I got a, a text this morning from our, our new district superintendent, which many of you met yesterday, uh, Dr. Toddy. I really like him. I tell you what, he, he, is, he is a leader who I think that will really benefit our, our district and all of our churches. Um, and he started this new, he's kind of taking us into some new technology things in the district. And he has a group text, and he's done this last couple weeks. He sends a text to all of us pastors in the morning. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding, Proverbs 3, 5. And then he quotes Pastor John MacArthur. You are the only Bible some unbelievers will ever read. Folks, yesterday, I don't know where our community is at in their faith walk, but we made an impression yesterday on people in this community, and that may be the only Bible some of them ever read, but having them join us and be a part of this community was just awesome. And I commend each one of you. Um, it couldn't have gone better if we planned it that way. It was, just, it, was, it was just a great, great time. So thank you to everyone. And I did joke around with a few of you yesterday that this may be a very short sermon today. <laughs> because after all we had done, finished cleaning up, I knew, it's like, boy, I still have a sermon right, and this is going to be a long evening. And I sat at my desk trying to put things together, thought about where this message was supposed to go, and all I could think about was how tired I was. And I've shared with you before that I don't love my sermon writing process. At this point in time, it's kind of what works, but I've learned better ways of doing it, better ways of preparing a message. The basic idea is to spend a lot of time in the scripture early in the week, a couple hours going through and, and just seeing where is the Holy Spirit leading you, break it down, what stands out to you, and then let it sit for a little while. And then go back to it on Tuesday or Wednesday, think a little deeper. What is it that we want to learn more about? What is it that strikes you? Then you get into the big books later in the week, as many of them call them, the commentaries, the resources. You start looking for stories, illustrations, and, and throughout the course of the week, it all kind of comes together. It's a somewhat drawn-out process that you probably are going to spend a good 10 hours a week or so sensing where God is leading you and preparing for that message. And the Holy Spirit works within you, and it all comes together. I love this idea, and I know pastors who use this method in their weekly routines. But the reality is working a full-time job throughout the week and going to school, I will have to keep dreaming about this process for a little while longer and use the one that I've learned to make work. It's kind of called the get enough of an idea where I think the message is going so I can get a title for our bulletins and then hope everything and pray for everything to come together on Saturday method. They don't teach you this one in licensing school and I'm thinking I might have to write a book someday so I can share with others the method. And today's title that came to mind earlier in the week is Past, Present, Future. We had quite a celebration yesterday of our past. And as I sat in my office last night trying to put together a sermon that's going to go with past, present, future, all I really wanted to do was crawl into bed. I heard somebody saying earlier that they thought, boy, it must be 8 or 9 o'clock. They looked at the clock and said, oh, it's only 5. I thought that same thing. <laughs> I hit a wall. And have you ever heard that phrase before, hitting a wall? Wikipedia puts it this way. In endurance sports, such as road cycling or long-distance running, hitting the wall, or the bonk as it's sometimes called, is a condition of sudden fatigue and loss of energy which is caused by the depletion of glycogen stores in the liver and the muscles. It's when your body's telling you, you just can't go anymore. You have to, you've run through all of your reserve energy, all of your resources, and everything within you is saying it's time to quit. Brian Wilkerson tells this story. I once ran in the New York City Marathon the first half of that race is a party. You're swept along by 28,000 runners, crowds lining the streets, 
and people running in costumes. You're touring, touring the ethnic neighborhoods of Brooklyn and Queens. You feel like you could run forever. At mile 13, you cross over into Manhattan and start heading north, away from the finish line. Central Park is now behind you, and you're going in the wrong direction. The crowds are thinner now. The party's over. At about mile 16 or 18, you hit the wall. You're absolutely miserable. Physically and psycholog psychologically, you're busted. All you want to do is stop running. I remember passing by one of the first aid stations. There were runners lying on cots, pale and gaunt, with IVs dripping into their arms, and I thought to myself, those lucky dogs. At that point, I began to despair. I imagined myself having to go home and tell everyone that I didn't finish. Why did I ever sign up for this race? What made me think that I could do it? Then it hit me. One way or another, I had to get to Central Park. That's where my ride was. I had no car. I had no money. I would have to get there on my own two feet. So I might as well keep running. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Don't think about the next six miles. Just think about the next step. And if you can keep that up, keep putting one foot in front of the other, the miles pass. And when you cross the finish line, it feels like glory, even when you're in 10,000th and 44th place. Brian concludes, some of you may be hitting a wall right now, feeling like you can't go on, like you'll never make it. Following Christ is harder than you ever imagined it would be. And you're thinking about giving up, about doing something foolish. Don't do it. There's no magic to endurance racing. It's all about continuing. Our passage from Hebrews today concludes with this very idea. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Run the race with perseverance. Like Brian's story earlier, there are times when we get tired. We see those first aid stations, and we think that maybe it's time to give in. Now, I'm not talking about being tired like I was yesterday or even like I am right now. It was a long day, and I really did want to go to bed. But I'm talking about the weariness we face in our Christian journey. It's not always easy, and sometimes we want to throw in the towel to walk away from the struggles we face but friends, we're in a marathon. We're not in a sprint. What's the difference? Well, the obvious answer is the length of the race. But there's much more to it than that. Grant Lovejoy shares this. A recent television documentary pointed out that the cheetah survives on the African plains by running down its prey. The big cat can sprint 70 miles per hour, but the cheetah cannot sustain that pace for long. Within its long, sleek body is a disproportionately small heart, which causes the cheetah to tire quickly. Unless the cheetah catches its prey in its first flurry, it must abandon the chase. Sometimes Christians seem to have the cheetah's approach to ministry. We Speed into projects with great energy, but lacking the heart for a sustained effort, we fizzle before the finish. We vow to start faster and run harder, and what we may not need is more speed, but more staying power, more stamina that comes only from a bigger heart. Motion and busyness, no matter how great, yield nothing unless we allow God to give us the heart. While I was worn out yesterday, on the other hand, I found a little more endurance. 
I loved hearing the stories from the past in this church. The people who, whose lives were touched and changed. Those who before leading this church as a pastor sensed their call to ministry in these very pews. Seeing the ways that this church has had an effect on this community for we celebrate 100 years, but for well beyond that. And I also found strength in the stories of the struggles that this community has faced. But the resilience that this church found to carry on. The many times the congregation seemed to find itself in the middle of divisions and questions about its future, but they found a way to come together and to continue God's work. The heart of this congregation is not one of a cheetah sprinting for a fast, short time. But instead, it is one of endurance. It's a heart for the community and the people around us. A heart that sustains us for the work that lays ahead. A heart that gives us the ability to open up for the community children, even though we may never see them here again. But we have, for one brief moment, been the Bible that they had the opportunity to read. Our past, our present, and our future are all built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. And I believe that we have the heart to carry on this mission that has been set before us. There are some, some times where we look and we're going to say that task is too big. And there are times we look and we say our budget is too small. There are moments that we want to jump off and go to the first first aid station we see but when we run the race with perseverance, we look to Jesus and we just keep going, one step at a time. I love this verse from Hebrews. The, the letter that we sent to the pastors to invite them, and actually it was in the, the anchor, this was the verse that um, I chose to include with that. I had absolutely no idea it was a lectionary verse for this weekend. It's one of those, again, God moments that you look and say, boy, isn't that convenient that running the race with perseverance happens to be on the weekend that we celebrate the anniversary of this church. We indeed are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, one that goes all the way back to 1818. And therefore, let us continue as a church to run the race that Christ has laid out for us with perseverance. Amen. Our hymn of response is God of Grace and God of Glory. Number 577 in the hymnal if you choose or on our screens. Oh, 
Please be seated. As we enter a time of prayer, um, I do want to ask you to keep Rick Kopp in your prayers. Um, Rick is currently in the hospital. He's awaiting some tests they'll be doing tomorrow um, to, to see what's, what's going on there. But um, I did talk to him yesterday. He's, he sounds tired, but he's doing okay. Um, but let's keep him in our prayers as we go forward. Let us pray. Gathering as your people, we offer the concerns of our life and the world, saying, God of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the universal church. May discord among denominations yield to unity and a common commitment to share the good news of Christ. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world. Prod us to engage in acts of mission and service that further the kingdom and honor the care that God has given us. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who hold authority in government. Enable policymakers to enact justice, transforming place of violence and conflict into havens of peace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in our community who are suffering the burden of illness, distress, or any kind of pain. Specifically today, we lift Rick up to you. We pray for healing. We lift up the medical team caring for him as they seek answers. We lift up Lois. Bring her your comfort and your peace. We also lift to you the names of those we know in our lives who we know need your healing touch. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all those who have left this earth and join the great cloud of witnesses in heaven. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Creator, you inspire us to trust in the things that we cannot see, to ground our faith in the promises that you make to us. Give us the clarity of your vision and make us ready to serve you as we await your return. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we continue in prayer together by praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Mindful of the abundance we have received in Christ, we offer ourselves and our gifts to the world. We have our offering plates by our doors as usual and our online giving options and our address for those joining us virtually this morning. Let us pray. We trust, O oh God, in your provision and your loving kindness. Use these gifts in our lives that we might bear fruit with praise and thanksgiving. We ask this in the confidence of your mercy and your love. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son,
And I invite you to remain standing if you're able for our hymn, O Day of God, Draw Nigh, number 730. Please be seated. So it dawned on me this week, and I never did send an email, I forgot. We didn't celebrate birthdays last week, I don't think. I don't remember singing happy birthday for our August birthdays. And I don't think we have it on the screen, but let's sing happy birthday to those on August. Maybe next week we'll put them on the screen, but let's sing happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And many more. It's been kind of a whirlwind couple of weeks as we prepared for the event yesterday. And I was sitting there and I thought, I don't think we did that. <laughs> so um, we can maybe put that on the screen next week if we remember so we can see the names. But um, Celebration service yesterday, again, incredible. Thank you again to everybody. We did record the service. Um, I had shared with a few people that we didn't want to live stream it because anytime you open up the floor for people to tell stories, you're not sure if you want that story going out to everybody at that time. So you want to have a little bit of control to say, we're going to edit that one out. But everything, went, we could have live streamed it because there were no, <laughs> no things I think that needed to be cut out of there. Um, but we're going to work on getting that video kind of processed and ready and we'll, we'll post it here eventually to our Facebook and our YouTube account. So those who couldn't be here can join in with us. Um, we just haven't had a chance to do that yet. So eventually it will be coming. And also, there were so many pictures taken. Um, I saw people with cameras all around, and we have the, we're going to leave up for the next few weeks at least the stuff we have throughout the building. We have these, oh, there's our August birthday. Well, happy birthday. <laughs> I didn't know it was that quick to put in there. I thought it took more than that. <laughs> um, but we have so many photo albums of, of things in the past, and somebody was commenting that we don't have a lot of pictures of more recent things. And a lot of the reason for that is, is you used to go and take a bunch of pictures and you'd go get them developed and they'd end up in a book. Well, nowadays, we take pictures. We have tons of pictures. They're just on digital devices. We don't have them at the ready where we pull them out. Um, there are ways of setting up an account that we can dump pictures into that you can, you can just say, I want to send these pictures to a folder. So I'm going to look at a way of doing that with the church in the next couple of weeks that we can send out a link and say, any pictures you took from this event, throw them in there and then we can save them digitally and actually display them um, throughout the building in the future. Um, so we'll, we'll work on getting that put together, but again, it won't be immediately. We've got to recover here just a little bit. But, so save those pictures. <laughs> uh, one of the reasons some of these things won't be happening immediately is um, we're on vacation next week. A much-needed getaway um, with Rochelle and I and the kids. One last one before we go back to school here uh, coming up in just a couple of weeks. So we're going to be away next Sunday. Um, I appreciate the, the time away, and I know Roberta and Karen and everybody have everything all planned, so it will all be good. Um, we're not going anywhere where I won't be unreachable this time, so if there's, if there's a pastoral emergency, please let me know. 
Um, last year, I know we went away, we were kind of hard to get in touch with. We were going to be in areas where our cell phone coverage wasn't good. Um, but if, if there's something that, that you're in desperate need of, don't feel that you can't contact me next, next week. I will get back to you as soon as I can. I uh, may not be immediately responsive, but we'll, we'll get you taken care of. Um, when we do come back that first Sunday, uh, August 28th, we're doing an outdoor worship. So what, what a welcome back. Let's do an outdoor worship. More work. Um, but they are a lot of fun, too. So I, I look forward to that. Hopefully the weather will hold out. So bring your, your chairs and uh, you know, bug spray and all those good things. Um, I mentioned a few times uh, new membership classes. And we want to get that going now. I wanted to kind of wait until we got through yesterday because there was a lot going on. And I've been looking at the calendar and time's getting kind of limited for our, um, our, our due date for the form we want to turn in. So new members Sunday uh, is going to be Sunday, September 11th. That's about the only Sunday that's available before that due date. If you can't be here, don't worry about it. You don't have to be here that Sunday to join the church. We'll make arrangements. Um, but because of that, Following August 28th service, um, we're going to have a little uh, get-together just to kind of go over what it means to be a member in the Methodist Church, um, some of the things involved with that. Um, I'm not going to call it a class because we're not, it's not a homework, it's not work, it's just gathering together to talk about what it means to be a Methodist. So, um, so if you can stick around August 28th, um, and this is for anyone, if you just want a refresher on why are we members of this church, stick around. <laughs> We, we can chat about that. If you can't make August 28th, again, I will make arrangements to um, meet with you one-to-one -one or whatever we have to do. We can pick another time. Um, but it'll just be a kind of quick membership gathering. And then September 11th, we will recognize all of you as joining the church. So, And lastly, the last thing I think I have to announce is this week at Finance, we talked about some uh, uh, fundraising ideas and we are going to do our summer bakeless bake sale so keep an eye out in the mailbox for your bakeless bake sale information um, it should be coming out here uh, pretty soon and we still have t-shirts available i guess i can mention that too if you want a t-shirt you want to remember that that great event we had a lot of t-shirts it was incredible to see a lot of out there 11 left so we still have 11 left if you want to buy one you may have to be you know you may have to take whatever size you can get but there's still 11 left, so with that, I think that's all the announcements. Let me offer the benediction. God is present to us, calling us to attend, calling us to attend to our lives and to our world. Confident in God's provision and the direction, we go forth inspired, seeking reconciliation in places of division, honoring the plight of those on the margins and filled with the gratitude of God's promises. May the God of creation and restoration give you confidence in the daily tasks set before you. The God of love and compassion assure you of your heritage as a child of God. The God of guidance and inspiration mold you in God's image. And the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer be with you and remain with you always. Amen. God bless. Have a wonderful week. And we have cake downstairs. Go get some cake. <laughs>